Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you a really gorgeous, love it, lacy stitch called the Fern Lace Stitch. And I'm using a dark background to really showcase this stitch a little bit better. This is actually surprisingly easy. It's only a four row repeat and every other row, it's just pearls. So you only really need to concern yourself with two of those rows. Um, absolutely love it. It reminds me very much of the feather and fan in its simplicity, and it's really quite stunning. Now, um, <clears throat> I did this piece, pardon me, with Vanna's Choice in the colorway of Dusty Green, which I thought was perfect for this stitch. Um, the edge down here, it's a little bit warbly, but um, absolutely love how in spite of the fact that uh, all of the stitches on the front side are knit stitches, it does lay flat as opposed to the stockinette stitch where it curls like a beast. Um, also, I'm going to show you the repetitions as far as how many stitches you're going to need. So you can make this piece as wide or as narrow as you want to. Uh, whether you want to make a, a baby blanket, a throw, an afghan, a scarf, what have you. You know, it's really quite simple and I cannot wait to share it with you because it's been a while since I've done a knitting tutorial. But I figured, hey, better late than never. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so before we get started, I'm just going to explain the multiples. Now, for this pattern, you need a multiple of nine stitches plus an additional four stitches. So, uh, for this piece here, I have a total of 40 stitches that I cast on initially, and that creates four panels, um, because uh, nine times three is 36 plus an additional four, um, so nine times three, it creates three spaces in between of your panels. And that is how it works into play. So what I did was I have my little double pointed needles here, my little Takumis. These are a size 10, by the way, with my worsted weight yarn. I have a tendency of knitting a little bit tightly. Um, by the way, the, the yarn uh, for this is going to be Red Heart Super Saver, just something I had to happen you know, to have lying around. Um, as far as the yarn and the needles, no, I'm not sponsored, but if you want to duplicate the results, you know, by all means, you know, you can do that. Um, now, let me just see. The millimeters are written on here somewhere, right? Ah, yes. The millimeters for these, yes. And by the way, this is a Clover, Clover brand product. It's a six millimeter size 10 in the Takumis. But yeah, I'm not sponsored, but you know I always like to let you know. Um, so for this project, you know, for this swatch, what I did was I cast on two multiples of nine for 18, then added four. So I've got 22 stitches on my needle right now. And if you don't know how to cast on, I'm going to post a link on how to do that uh, in the description box down below. And also, same thing goes for casting off or binding off, however you want to put it. I'm going to put that into the description box down below, all right? So what you want to do is cast on a multiple of nine stitches plus four, and then hop right to it with row one. All righty. All righty, row one. So row one is really quite simply just purl all of your stitches. You know, easy enough, right? And this I will actually do on camera. Also, always, always, always be sure that you are actually stitching with your working yarn and not with your tail. Otherwise, you are going to not, <laughs> you're, you're not going to get very far if you're knitting with your tail. Um, so every other row, it's just purling. So that's easy enough, right? And, uh, that's kind of one of the, the nice things about this pattern is that every other row, you get sort of a break. And even though the pattern looks complex, I'm also going to show you how you can identify 
where you are at within your pattern. So if you forget what row you're on, which is easy to do, believe you me, I know. Um, if you forget where you're at, you will be able to identify where you are at within the pattern, and then you can pick up where you left off. No big deal. So right now I am just, as I said, I'm just purling all of my little stitches. And this is going to be what you're going to do for every other row, rows one and three of this pattern. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And let me just scooch my stitches down a little bit. And also I find <clears throat> that the reason why I use these double pointed needles for the tutorials is because it's a lot easier when working in front of the camera to use short needles. But you can use circulars or regular long needles like I showed in the beginning. Um, so there, there is a method to my madness. <laughs> um, you know, I, I do things for a reason, but you can use whatever needles work for you. And of course you could also use larger needles, finer needles, um, whatever size works well with the weight of yarn that you intend on using. All right, so just a couple more. And that will be the end of row one. Easy enough, right? Right. Like so. And so that is row one. Just purl all of your stitches. By the way, I did try doing this piece, doing knit stitches on every row to create more, to, more of a, a garter effect, it didn't work. <laughs> For me, it didn't work, but I did try it, you know. So that's row one, and we shall continue. Alrighty. Alrighty, row two. This is where the fun starts. Okay, so now at the beginning of row two, going to start with knitting three stitches. One, and two, and three. Okay, now this is where the repeat starts. For the repeat, it is a yarn over, okay, then knit two. So I yarned over and knitting two. like so, then a S-K-P-O, okay? So what that means, it's a skip-O. <laughs> so an S-K-P-O is you slip as if to knit, so slipping that stitch off as if to knit, okay? Then you knit a stitch, and then pass that slip stitch over the stitch that you just knitted. So that's your skip out. <laughs> okay, then knit two stitches together. So going in and knitting two stitches together it can be a little bit tricky getting underneath, you know, and through both of those loops, especially if you are a tight knitter, which I am. But if you are persistent and patient, you can do it. Also, keep in mind, it does help if you stitch just a little bit looser. So I'm knitting those two stitches together. Okay. Then knit two stitches regularly. All right. And then yarn over 
and knit one. Yarning over and knitting one. And that is a full repeat. So then to do the repeat again, yarn over, knit two stitches. That's one. Two. Do a SKPO, a skipo, so that's slip as if to knit. Knit a stitch. And then pass over that slip stitch over your knit stitch and off. There you go. Then knit two together again. Like so. And then knit two stitches. Yarn over, knit one stitch, and then the last stitch is just a knit stitch. Ta-da! All right, and so you may not see much of anything yet, but it will be happening, trust me. All right, so that's the end of row two. All righty, row three. Now, row three, just like row one, it's just purl stitches. It's really that simple. However, I am going to do this one just to show you that you do need to be a little bit careful because with the, the yarn overs, they have sort of a, a sneaky little tendency to want to get away from you. And I'll show you what I mean. You know, it's just all purl stitches, really no big deal. See, here we have a yarn over right there. And if you're not careful, he may try to get away from you. Don't let him. All right. And just purl all of your stitches all the way across. Now, rows one and three, they're sort of the, the vacation from the pattern, if you will. You know, sort of a, a no-brainer kind of aspect to the pattern, which I rather like. <laughs> you know, rows two and four, eh, well, you know. If you want to meet butterflies, you have to deal with a little, you know, a couple of caterpillars. You know, see, I have another yarn over right here. Got to be careful, making sure that it doesn't slip off. All right. See, there's another one. Got to be careful. All right, just working our way across. And I don't know if you just heard that explosion in the background, but uh, it is 4th of July weekend, and they're starting early. Well, 4th of July isn't for a couple days still, but yep, they're starting early around here. So if you hear booming banging, explosion-type noises in the background. I apologize for that. But at least the central air hasn't kicked on yet, which is just as noisy. Alrighty. 
And there you go. That's the end of row three. Easy peasy, just like that. So now, shifting our work a little bit, let's see what we got. Now, again, you really can't see much of anything going on at the moment. However, oh, see, we have an eyelet. And let's see. Oh, we have another eyelet right there. So that will become more and more pronounced as the pattern develops. You know, so we got one right there too. Um, so if you don't see anything really predominant right away, don't be discouraged. Got to keep going with the swatch. Okay, so we're going to do row four. All right, row four. Now row two and row four, there's only one difference between the rows. With row two, we start with a knit three. With row four, we start with a knit two, and then we have the repeat. And we it's a, it, it's a bit of a staggering, and I'll show you why, actually. So right now, we're going to start our row of row four with two knit stitches. Just two regular knit stitches. Okay, then starting the repeat, it's yarn over and knit two. Okay, then another another skip -o. so it's slip as if to knit. knit a stitch and then pass the slip stitch over the needle being careful not to lose that knit stitch so that's our skip out <laughs> then knit two together There we go. Knitting two together. Then knit two. Yarn over and knit one. Okay, then we repeat. So the repeat again is yarning over, knit two, SKPO. So my, our skip O is slip as if to knit, knit, and pass the slip over the knit. Okay, then knit two together. Come on. There we go. Knitting two together. Knit two regular stitches. Yarning over. And knit one. And then at the end of row four, you should have two stitches left. And so you would knit those two stitches. Ta -da! There you go. And so that is a full four row repeat. 
And like I said, yes, I know perfectly well it does not look like much at the moment. Also, this is the, the wrong side. The right side looks a little bit prettier. Um, and so you can see how we have some eyelets developing. And in the middle, we definitely have some eyelets developing. And that will become more and more pronounced as you go on, believe you me. So I'm going to do another full repeat for you because, hey, this is what I do for you guys. I love you guys. So starting over for, oops, <laughs> starting over for row one, excuse me, purl all of your stitches for row one, and I will meet back up with you for row two again. Okie dokie, okie dokie. All right, back to row two, because row one, which I just finished, was all purl stitches. Now, as far as identifying where you're at within the pattern, I've got a great trick for you. Okay, now I did mention before that row two is a matter of starting with a knitting of three, and row four is starting with two knit stitches. So now right here, we're on row two. Now, if we did two knit stitches, one and two, right here is where we have our yarn over, our eyelet right there. So what you need to do is, because this is row two, you need to start with a knit three, one, two, and three, so that right here is where you're going to have your next eyelet. See, like this, right down there. So that's a way of knowing where you're at within the pattern because you don't want to have an eyelet above, right above an eyelet in this case. You want it to be on this fourth stitch right here, okay? So that is how you can tell where you need to be because these eyelets zigzag back and forth and back and forth. So you really can't make out down there. But So we've got right here and right here. So we need to go back over here, zigzag, okay? Just a little explanation as to identifying where you need to be. You know, like if you had a scrap of paper or a counter and, well, your cat got to it, um, <laughs> that way you know, oh, yep, this is where I am. All right, so starting, like I said, with three knit stitches, one, and two, and see that's the, the yarn over that we did before with our eyelet, so we need to knit three. Then we can proceed with our repeat, which starts with the yarn over, then knit two, All right, then another skippo. So that's slip as if to knit, knit one stitch, and then pass that slip over. And there you go. So after the SKPO, knit two together. There we go. <clears throat> Knitting two together. Then knit two regular stitches. Then yarn over again. And knit one. Again with the repeat, yarning over, knit two, slip as if to knit, knit, and 
pass the slip over for your skippo. Knit two together, if I can get there. There we go. Knitting two together. Knit two stitches. Yarning over and knit one stitch. And then if you did it right, you should end up with one stitch at the end of row two and you just knit that stitch. Ta da And then for row three, just purl all of your stitches and I'll meet back up with you when I'm ready for row four. Alrighty, row four. So again, to recap, see our eyelets on the edge here, how they go from left to right to left. Well, it needs to go back to the right. So it's going to be starting off with two knit stitches sorry, two knit stitches, and then that third is going to be where the eyelet needs to be for that yarn over. You know, just, you know, my little way of trying to help you make sense of a seemingly very intricate and potentially impossible pattern. No, anything is possible. You know, I never thought that I would be doing lace. Never, you know, because I found yarn overs and, you know, skippos and knitting two together. I found that to be intimidating, but you know what? If you just break it down into, you know, simplified terms, it really does make a difference, you know, and just don't forget, breathe. Breathing is good. It's underrated. All right, so starting row four, we're going to knit two regularly to start our row here. Then we're going to start the repeat. So that's going to be a yarning over and knit two. Now we need a, a skippo. So that is, of course, slip as if to knit, knit, and then pass. Pass over. There we go. Then knitting two together. Knit two. Yarn over and knit one. All right, then for the repeat again, yarning over, knit two, another skippo, so that's slip as if to knit, knit, and pass over, there we go, knit two together, <coughs> there we go, knitting two together, knitting two stitches, Yarn over and knit one. And then because it is row four, just knit the last two stitches. Ta da! And so now. 
you can see we have our eyelets in the middle and our eyelets on the edge here. Absolutely love it. And let me just get out my other piece here and show you perhaps a little bit clearer because you know, I had to scrunch everything onto those DPNs, I'm sorry. So you can see here how these eyelets on the edge here, they go back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. You know, and that for me would be a really great trick. See, um, now for instance, you can see here as far as our stitches. So I have two regular stitches and then I have my yarn over, right? So the next row would be knitting three stitches, then do the yarn over and proceed along, okay? So in this case, um, I would be up to row two. Just by looking at my piece here, I know exactly where I'm at. So listen, I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful. As always, I really hope so, because I know how intimidated I was by making lace. But you know what? If I can do this, you can do this, most definitely. Also, one more suggestion that I would potentially recommend to you would be to use a lifeline. And a lifeline um, is a way of securing your stitches as you're making you know, a potentially complex pattern. And that way, if you make a mistake, you can rip out your stitches and your lifeline is still there. I'm going to put a link to that also in the description box down below because it's a little trick that I find helpful, especially when you're unsure about a pattern. And if you make a mistake, it might be difficult to fix it. Okay, so I'm going to do that as well. So if you're liking this, please Give me a little thumbs up button down there. Would always appreciate that because I appreciate your appreciation, most definitely. And also, I would love to hear your comments, as always. And speak of the devil, the AC turned on. Um, so I uh, would love to hear your comments. And also, please hit subscribe for more because I do try to post as often as I can, whether it's crocheting, knitting, audiobook narration, or on my other channel, Fiber Spider Games, video game playthrough, and snarky commentary. So listen, until next time, I hope you have an awesome day, and I want you all to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.